Are you aware that if there was a prisoner of war or a slave or a criminal who was condemned to death, that for the right price you could pay a Greek or a Roman and you could get the freedom for those people in whatever situation that they were in? These people in the world practice this redemption that we're going to be mentioning this morning. So what we're looking at is a little bit different. What we're looking at is God redeeming us. We see it in the Old Testament when God redeemed Israel. In fact, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 8 basically says that. God said, I brought you out with a mighty hand. I redeemed you from the house of bondage. That's God telling the house of Israel that He gave them their redemption from uh, Egyptian bondage. I want to suggest to you as we begin this lesson this morning that redemption is very applicable to us today. This is a very practical lesson for every one of us in this building. And I want to mention that for four reasons. Four reasons. Number one, it's so practical because, number one, we are lost in sin. We are lost in sin. Isaiah 59, 1 2 teaches that, doesn't it? It teaches us that, that your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sin has any place that going to hear you. It's not that the Lord's hand is short that He cannot say. It's not that His ear is heavy that He cannot hear. But our sin, our sin is what separates us from God. And as long as we're living in our sin, then we are lost in that sin. I would suggest to you that the further that we're condemned to death, that's what Paul said in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. He simply said that the wages of sin is death. So number one, if I'm living in sin, I need to understand about that sin, that I am condemned to death because of that sin. And number three, I would suggest to you that there's not anything that any of us can do in and among ourselves that we can do about sin and it's impending death. Apart from God, apart from the Bible, apart from the Gospel, apart from Jesus Christ and what He's done for us, there's not anything that I can personally do myself to get rid of my sin and not be condemned to death. I just can't do it. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, Solomon said, if there's a way that's in the right of man, but the end of it is the way of death. You see, we may think that we can save ourselves, but in reality, we cannot. Therefore, number four, I think it's still important for us this morning. And that is that we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, that He alone has paid the debt. First Peter chapter 3, verse 24, it was Peter who said about Jesus that He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree. So you see how practical this lesson is going to be this morning. This is something that every single one of us can use. It's something that every single one of us can appreciate. Now, a couple of questions. How important is it for people to be redeemed? Well, if we understand redemption, we understand it's very important because we can go to heaven without being redeemed. So it's very important, isn't it? Secondly, how important is it for us to introduce people to their redeemed? Now, that's a course of a different color, isn't it? How important is it for people to be redeemed? All of us would say it's so important. That's the same thing they need to the world. In fact, they can have the whole world in it to get back and live their own soul. So it's so important, but how important it is for me and for you to introduce them to Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior. I would suggest to you it's very important because as we mentioned in class this morning, the world's not going to save itself. You know, we've been challenged by our Lord. We've been given directions by our Lord that we are to go. We're going to make disciples of all nations, and that includes this nation. That includes this state. That includes this city. That includes this neighborhood. That includes the houses that we live in. Now, that being said, I want to suggest to you there's something else important that we need to understand. And it's an important attitude that we need to have toward bringing someone to Christ. We need to have the attitude this morning, and I need to have the attitude this morning, that I can do something to bring someone to Christ. I can. Let's face it. Each and every one of us, we can do something to bring someone to Christ. Even if it's nothing more than inviting them to a service, which says, you know, I'm not degrading that at all. We need to invite them to our services. Even if it's something like, why don't you come to Bible class? Let's hear this. Let's just play this Bible class. Or maybe it's something like, you know, I know someone who can maybe explain to us maybe the question that you have about God, about Jesus, about heaven, about salvation, about hell, about Satan, about sin. And let me take you to them. And let me take you to her so that they can explain to you what the Bible says and show you in the Bible what it is God wants you to know. 
There are so many things that we can do in order to help bring people to Christ. We can send, send cards. You just don't realize, you don't realize how much good can be done by sending a card. It's maybe we can send someone a personal way, a personal thank you for visiting with us. Maybe we can give them a visit and say, you know, I'm so glad that you visited with us. We're so happy to have you. We hope that you'll come back and be with us again. It doesn't hurt. You know, hardly, hardly anybody will say, I can't do that. I think probably the important thing we need to understand is that we can do this something. I think Paul had this attitude. Paul the Apostle, when we read back in the Bible, when we read about Paul, and remember when he went by that riverside and there was those women there worshiping under the old law, Paul used that opportunity and he taught them. And Lydia and her household was converted. What about when he was in jail? You know, we think to ourselves, you know, I can't do anything if I'm incarcerated. And we can't expect people who are members of the church who are in jail to do anything because they're incarcerated. But we can, can't we? Look at what Paul did with this Philippian jailer. When the Bible says that at midnight, you remember, there came that earthquake and the, the prison bars or the prison doors were open and the jailer was going to kill himself. He was going to commit suicide because he thought the prisoners had escaped and they hadn't escaped at all. And he wanted to know what he needed to do to be saved. Paul used that opportunity, didn't he? See, we need to do that whenever we go in various aspects of life. Use those opportunities. What about Paul when he was standing before a king? You know, normally we think if we're standing before the President of the United States or, or the King of some country, we wouldn't even think about saying anything about the Christ. You know what Paul did? He preached the Christ. He What about in Acts 17? When he was on Mars Hill, as we commonly call it, the Areopagus there in Athens. The Bible says that he taught them about God, the one that they had a shrine to because they thought he was unknown. They didn't want to be Paul said, you know, you're, you're uh, worshiping this unknown to God. I'm going to I'm going to show you and teach you who he is. What about Acts 28, verses 19 and 20, when Paul himself was in prison? And the Bible says for two years he received people constantly. That's what the verbs indicate. He was constantly receiving people. He was teaching people while he was in prison. Philippians chapter 4, verse 22 indicates that there were even saints in Caesar's household. Now, if you understand anything about Roman government, you know that Caesar was the main man. Whatever Caesar said went. And Paul was incarcerated in, in Caesar's household. And the Bible says there, Paul was writing and he says, the saints who are in Caesar's household greet you. How did they become saints? Paul talked. Paul talked. So you see, as we go throughout our lives, we need to make sure if we take every opportunity that we have available to us in order to do what we can to teach or to influence other people about our Savior, about our Redeemer. So let's think this morning. I want to suggest to you three important points that we can get across to people in our relationships with them that will help encourage them to be redeemed. Because you know what happens if they're redeemed, don't you? They're saved. And you know what happens if they're saved, don't you? You help build up the church. And that's exactly what this series of lessons is all about. Three things that we need to get across. Number one is found in Genesis chapter 1. Go back to the passage. Go back to the passage. It said, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature according to his kind, and have a great thing, the beast of the earth, each according to its kind. It was so. Verse 25. God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, and have according to its kind, and every thing that creeps on earth according to his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image according to our life, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God said, For God created man in his own image, the image of God he created him, that of the he created them. The very first point that I want us to see in our lesson this morning is I want us to see that God made you in His image. God made you and He made me in His image. Too many times today we want to make God in our image, don't we? But it's not possible. God made us in His image. I think it's so interesting that we see in verses 24 some one time.